Thanks again very much for joining us here on The Real Story today. We're talking presidential politics now. And this week's Democratic debate in Las Vegas, at the moment, which Democrat has the best chance of beating President Trump? That's the first question we're going to put to Sacred Heart University professor Gary Rose, who joins us this morning with his take on that. Welcome to The Real Story. Good, good to be here. Good to have you good back. Good to see you. Sure. All right, so uh, if you just make a judgment based on what you saw Wednesday evening at that debate out in Las Vegas, uh, who would you say uh, is the leader? Yeah. Well, within the party, of course, it's it's Bernie Sanders. Right. But you know, what's what takes place within the party is very different than what takes place in the general electorate. And uh, I would have to say that uh, Bernie Sanders cannot beat. I, I don't want to predict for sure, but I think it's very difficult for a democratic socialist in this country to win the American presidency. Self-proclaimed democratic. Self-proclaimed, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, the and the evidence is overwhelming that the American people are not where Bernie Sanders is. Uh, there is a portion of the Democratic Party, maybe 30, 35 percent, that is where Bernie Sanders is. But the nation as a whole, and that's what really matters when it comes to win the, the general election, yeah. is really a much more center, to actually slightly center-right electorate. And so I have a hard time envisioning uh, Bernie Sanders, this really strident, progressive, democratic socialist, Beating Donald Trump He's in very, the general very election. passionate. Uh, totally passionate. Very sure. passionate about what he believes. He is. And uh, and so are most of the others. It's just that his passion really comes out. That's right. I mean, I, I do see, you know, the East Coast and the West Coast, um, which are, of course, very progressive areas of the country, uh, supporting somebody like, like Bernie Sanders. However, when you get into the South, there are a lot of electoral votes down there, and also the Rust Belt. I have a hard time really envisioning uh, Sanders winning that election. What did you think of the debut of uh, the former mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg? Well, you know, like everyone else, I was so excited. I couldn't wait to watch the debate last night. And there was so much, you know, hype about, about Bloomberg now finally being on stage with the others. And I watched that, and I just couldn't believe how unprepared he was. Um, it seemed I, do you, like he, you think he didn't prepare for the the, what, the assaults? Well, you know, that's, it's amazing. I mean, he has consultants. He's got all the money in the world to yeah. have people around him, and it doesn't seem as if he really was prepared on how to rebut what I'm sure he knew was coming. And maybe he felt that the strategy would be just to not not address it and just you know let these let these barbs go and roll off and then maybe he could talk about other matters but in a debate it's count it's it's point counterpoint you got to be ready for that and wow when when elizabeth warren went after him and sanders and yet he really didn't seem to respond in a real forceful way and i was thinking hey, is this is this really you know a, a presidential candidate who was prepped for his debut and if that's if that's if he was prepped, then there's a real problem because it didn't look good. And uh, how did you feel about how he handled the questions about his relations with uh, with women and uh, the stop and frisk issue? How did he handle that? Did, was he? Yeah, he, he 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 addressed it. You know, he did say that there were some non-disclosure agreements, right. and he and and he recognizes that that stop and frisk was a problem. But again, it, it was just so flat. And it just didn't seem to have any emotion. Um, maybe, maybe somebody's advising him to conduct himself that way. I can't remember how he debated as as a mayor, but, but certainly on the presidential stage, on the big stage, you've got to show passion and you've got to have charisma. I didn't see any of that last night in him. Well, there was uh, there, there have been a lot of people who've uh, been looking at him as believing what he said I'm the guy who can go toe to toe with Donald Trump yeah and of course when when you when you spend uh, millions and millions and millions as he as he has done so far for yeah. his ads I mean he has great ads on TV and it also it, you get the impression that Barack Obama actually is endorsing him in these ads you know but nevertheless um, yeah, it is possible that he could go toe to toe with um, with President Trump, but the problem is he's got to get through the Democratic Party first in those contests, those caucuses and primaries, and I'm not so sure that's going to happen, particularly after watching last night. Yet he has come up in the polls. That's true, 
and we have some major contests coming, and he's banking certainly on March 3rd, which, mm -hmm. which of course is Super Tuesday with all these primaries, yeah. and we're going to have a good portion of delegates, uh, over a third, chosen by then. But if, if Bloomberg doesn't really perform in that event, he's not even competing in the first four, but if right. he doesn't perform on March 3rd, then I don't, I don't see that he's going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with Donald Trump. All right, so uh, now among the other candidates, uh, is uh, if, you're, if you're not picking him, unless he straightens up, uh, who, who do you think really has what it takes to be uh, a formidable contender yeah. against the president? Yeah. Well, you know, in looking at the, at the other candidates out there, um, initially I thought Joe Biden would be able to be a, a formidable candidate, but his stock is going way down. And in the debate last night, the fact that nobody was targeting him it was obvious they don't consider him to be really all that formidable any longer. But I think uh, if, if I was to, to actually say there'd be somebody who really could give Trump, and I'm saying this right now, of course, it's a long ways away still, sure. that could give him a real run for his money, I'd have to say um, Mayor Pete Buttigieg. I think so. Uh, he did very well in Iowa. Uh, he, he placed very well in, um, in New Hampshire. Uh, he's not going to do all that great in, in Nevada and South Carolina, but I do think in other contests, Buttigieg actually could be viable. And in a general electorate now, in, in the general election, I should say, with the, general, with the electorate, you know, independents, Republicans, Democrats, I think that actually uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg could, could be formidable, a formidable general uh, election candidate. I think so. How about any of the women? Yeah, you know, Amy Klobuchar came in third. That was the big story up in New Hampshire. And she is really great on her feet. Um, but at the same time, um, she, she's running out of money. She's not doing good with money. And I know that her infrastructure has problems. So I'm not sure how, how much longer she's going to be in the race. Well, Gary Rose, I appreciate you coming in. Uh, you know, it's always fun to watch politics. Uh, yeah. it, it wasn't too much fun watching what happened to <laughs> Mayor Bloomberg. but. <laughs> Uh, so there you are. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens next. Okay. <laughs> More yeah. drama. I don't know. Uh, thank you very much. And coming up on The Real Story at 1030, Real People with Stan Simpson. And we want to get a preview on what's coming up from Stan. Hey, hey Al. Stan. Al, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing, brother? Good. That was a savaging of Mike Bloomberg tonight. My goodness, I had to go out and get popcorn and watch the rest <laughs> of it. It was like a battle royal. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was. He, he was. He was getting pummeled from every direction. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. Sucker punches. But you know what? It all comes down to the swing states. When it's all said and done, it's who can win those swing states: Wisconsin, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida. Forget everything else. You got to match up. Who's going to win those swing states? What it comes down to. Yeah, Gary's not in his head in approval of what you just said. <laughs> Gary, how you doing? <laughs> He's doing fine. I, he, I don't think he can hear you. Okay. That's all right. Well, uh, well listen, today we are talking with a man who's be, who will become an important voice in Connecticut's theater community. Godfrey Simmons Jr. is the new artistic director at Heartbeat Ensemble. The Hartford Regional Theater Group is known for its provocative and thought-provoking performances We'll hear why the inclusion of diverse voices is so important to telling authentic stories. Al Settlin, Real People with Stan Simpson, is next. All right, buddy. Thank you. We'll look forward to that. Right. Stan, thank you very much for doing this show every week after we're on. It makes a great hour, doesn't it? And don't forget, if you missed something here on The Real Story, you can watch it online. Just go to fox61.com. Thanks for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. And on behalf of Jen Bernstein, who's off this week, we'll see you here again next week. Have a great morning.